right, so a few weeks ago, I put a photo up on my social media of me sticking a thermometer into the ground, measuring the temperature. I got a lot of feedback about why I was doing that, and people that have gotten into the whole lawn care thing, they become these lawn nuts, they knew what I was doing, but a lot of people didn't. So, this is the video explaining what I've done to my lawn over the past couple of years. Really gone from a complete zero lawn to something I'm really proud of at this point, and I'm continuing to work on... So a little bit of a history, I bought the house in 2006 and I did absolutely nothing, if anything, very, very little with the lawn. I kind of just left it as it was. The property line in the back of the yard was kind of creeping further and further into the yard, making the yard smaller, which I'll be honest, I thought it was a good idea because it was making it less for me to mow when I actually would mow. When I got married, my wife actually did some work in the back and extended my yard by about 15 feet just by clearing out brush and shrub that had just really overtaken it. For the most part, the yard wasn't really grass. It was more weeds and grass green stuff growing. There was even some stuff like if you touched it, you'd get a bit of a rash and it itch and scratch. It was not good. It wasn't poison ivy. It wasn't poison oak or anything. It was just like this weird thing. Aside from what my wife did on the back line, I really hadn't done much to kind of improve the property, the look, the aesthetics of it and whatnot. I just kind of maintained. In 2019, we went ahead, we paved the driveway, replaced the front steps and land and we replaced the walkway with some nice pavers, changed the layout of it. And that was gonna be kind of the first step and I was gonna start to, you know, slowly, a little bit here and there, do things. Now up until this point, I had started watching some videos from Grass Daddy, from Ryan Noor, from some of those other people. And, but let's be honest, doing a complete lawn renovation takes a ton of time and usually baseball season takes that up starting in April till the pandemic hit. But then baseball was canceled for me. And so is travel and going out and yeah. So that's really where the journey began to take my yard to a new level. Here's the demographics, live in Warren, Rhode Island. I've got a 10,000 square foot yard. So this is how the project list kind of ran down. In March of 2020, I rented a stump grinder and I ground out the stumps that were in the yard in the back and the side. Then we got into April and that's where all the really fun stuff really started happening. I rented a sod cutter and I sod cut the entire grass. I did it about an inch and a half deep, maybe two inches in some areas. Cause I wanted to get all that crap, those weeds, that weird stuff I couldn't identify. I wanted it gone. Then we got a jackhammer and we jackhammered down these massive boulders where the top of the boulders were near the surface. We jackhammered them to about to 10 inches below the top layer there. That required some significant effort. That was a backbreaker. That was, yeah, that was fun. We got on the schedule to have some dirt delivered and graded. And in the meantime, we had rebuilt the front gardens, changed the shape of them, redid the look. And then we brought in about 64 yards of really nice screen dirt. I had a company come in with the Bobcat, just to spread it, level it off, grade it as best as possible. From there, I ordered Seed from Seed Superstore. Their Sun Mix, perfect for this area. I talked to Drew Kinder and their people. They were awesome. I went with Kentucky Bluegrass and boy, I'm so glad I did that. The lawn has looked awesome. I'm gonna be honest, we have a well here and Kentucky Bluegrass, she be thirsty. Well, let me tell you, absolutely. So I bought a four zone, four times, spring, four zone, four times sprinkler thing to put on my outdoor spigot, put sprinklers out there, and these things were going off at all hours or different times to keep the grass, to keep the seed moist so it wouldn't dry up. I'd put the seed out, put down some starter fertilizer with some pre-emergent and prayed. Um, <laughs> Kentucky bluegrass takes a little bit of time to germinate. Oh boy. <laughs> I was in deep at this point and started to see some sprouts and it really started to uh, pop up nicely. And yeah, you know, it, it, it really started to fill in. Water, water, water was the key, the proper amount, you know, kind of keeping up with that, making sure I didn't miss it. And then there were some areas that started growing faster than others. And I didn't want to use the gas powered rotary motor. So I purchased the least expensive cylinder reel mower, push manual one, just from the local hardware store. And that thing was great. I actually got into it and I was doing it every couple days. I, I liked the lawn low, tried to keep it nice as possible. and it was doing the job. Now I did have a serious crabgrass problem that started later in the season. That's because when Kentucky bluegrass first started, or at least mine did, I had some splotches, some areas, some, you know, areas that weren't as densely covered. And, you know, I had gone back and reseeded them and, you know, worked to, to get that, but certainly had some serious crabgrass infestation at that point. So did as much as I could to mitigate it. But at some point you kind of just have to let nature do its thing. Hey, 
Speaking of the great outdoors, let me take a quick minute to let you know that right now at all the Cardi's Furniture and Mattresses locations, the outdoor is in. Their outdoor furniture collection is in and boy, it looks amazing this year. It's great for outdoor entertaining or simply just relaxing out there with your family or yourself at the end of a long, hard day. Look, you work hard to make your yard and lawn look and feel amazing. Why not enjoy it in comfort and style? You can be the envy of your neighbors and guests, but don't leave them in the dark. Tell them to go to Cardi's Furniture and Mattresses as well. And after you've done that, if you're still feeling generous, then you can give them a hand, you know, making that lawn look amazing as well. Cuddy's Furniture and Mattresses has locations in Rhode Island, Massachusetts, and New Hampshire. And of course, you can always shop online at cardies.com. As the summer went on, the Kentucky bluegrass, the whole lawn, really started to tighten up to what I thought was pretty good. Now it's about September 2020. We had a fairly hot summer, and once September rolled around, we started getting those late summer cooler evenings, those temperature cool-offs and whatnot. I saw the lawn really kind of take off again, really started to thicken up, but that was completely, completely accelerated when I rented the plug aerator machine now i have a confession i don't know where the video is of me doing the plug area but i poked a lot of holes in my yard i did it a day after it had rained so the ground was nice and moist and the cores came up they looked great a week later i'm not kidding you it started to take on the look of a beautiful carpet out there just a nice canopy layer of beautiful kentucky bluegrass it was starting to really thicken up and get really lush and everything. So that was that was really rewarding right there. And it was at that time of year, under the advice of the Seed Superstore, I had actually saved about 10% of the seed that I had purchased and spread that out and certainly saw that really start to come in and fill in some of the holes. Around Christmas time, my parents had got me a really nice high-end, heavy-duty, manual cylinder reel mower that was cool i actually mowed in december because it was warm enough and i wanted to try it came out good i just took a little bit off a little bit in the spring of last year 2021 i had hit it early with the pre-emergent to combat the crabgrass and also some lime to kind of sweeten up the soil still had some areas that were a little spotty so i did get some crabgrass but not as bad as the first year and everything again started to really tighten up as the lawn came back my mowing cycle was every two to three days with the real mower and i go out early in the morning and do it it was nice it was calm and because it was quiet it was a manual mower i could do it real early without waking the neighbors towards the middle to late summer i had really started noticing these ruts these little divots you know these bumps really like forming in the yard and i talked with elliot who's the head groundskeeper up at polar park where the woo Sox play shout out he just got an award i had seen him out on the baseball field with like a steamroller a little smooth drum roller told him where i was at and he said that he, he, he actually recommended doing the same for mine and at that time of year none were available the only thing i could get my hands on was a two-ton static roller so i said something's better than nothing so went through and for about four or five hours i literally just drove back and forth left and right side to side diagonal circles just anything to help make it smooth it wasn't necessarily leveling the lawn but it was making it smooth because uh, when I thought Callie was running I was afraid she was gonna like you know roll an ankle or something some of these divots were pretty bad so that made a huge difference and within a week the grass popped up. I used the leaf blower to just kind of, you know, pop it back up after I'd done all the rolling. You could see the lawn was stressed, but within, I'd say a good five to seven days, it was back like nothing had ever happened except it was smoother. So now here we are in spring 2022. And uh, some of those divots and ruts are back. Obviously, you're going to get that with the ground freeze. It's important. I never aerated last year. I should I should note that. I never did the aerator last year. I just ran out of time. Didn't get a chance to do it. Now, like I said, I've noticed a few of the ruts. It's not as bad as it was. Just some of it's come back up. And this is my perfect opportunity because these are the plans I have for summer 2022. Now, it's mid-March. Pretty soon, I'm going to be doing a dethatching. Because I've noticed there's a lot of, you know, cuttings and clippings and stuff. And I want to clear that area out so that the Kentucky bluegrass has area to grow and spread because it will thicken up again. I'm going to do an aeration thinking mid to late May. I'm give the lawn a nice running start and get some good growth going on and then I'm going to do the plug aeration and get that going. I've got the pre-emergent that'll be going down pretty soon. I'll make a video about that, about what I'm using and, and how I apply it and you know doing the micro dosing thing because I want to keep what I put down on it light. Also this spring I'm going to do a lawn leveling with a mix of screened bloom and sand number two mason sand and dirt and do a 50 50 mix probably heavier on the dirt side but the whole goal is to make it level and smooth i've already purchased a nice lawn leveling rake 
I've been watching all the videos. I've already contacted the local suppliers to get the sand and everything here. So I'll be making videos about that because that's gonna be a process. I'm looking right now at about four tons of sand, and four yards of dirt, maybe five, good time. Of course, if any rental company wants a nice little sponsorship or a nice little plug, you wanna let me use one of those little drive around scoopy things with the tractor the thing, good. Not a, not a bobcat, but you know, the little one you kind of manual walk behind. Let me know. Hey, thank you so much for watching. If you have any questions, any comments, anything you wanna say, please put it in the comments below. Keep it friendly. I'm still new, I'm still learning. See you next time.